Welcome to Get a Clue Number 1, Selected Problems from the Algebra 2 Test on Chapter 1. This is the first of what I hope will be a series of videos on test reviews over the year. In these reviews, I want to concentrate mainly on the easy problems, making sure that we're learning to use our brains and the tools available to us so that we won't miss them. Caution, I use the word idiot in this video. I promise that none watching this video who understands a single thing I'm saying is an idiot. I just like to use the term for what I would call dramatic intensity. Even people who are not idiots will make mistakes. Here's the first one we'll look at, problem number four. It's a real easy one, and while not a whole lot of people missed it, the fact that anyone missed it is troubling. Here I've brought it down so we can work below. We have two x terms, 6x and minus 26x. What's 6 minus 26? It's negative 20, so that would be negative 20x. That would eliminate choices C and D that don't have minus 20x. Now we shift our attention to the y terms, plus 21y and plus 64y. We add them together and get plus 85y. So that would give us B as the correct answer is underlined here. Still, it's important to check whenever possible, and we'll do this with the graphing calculator. We check for expression equivalency by storing numbers for x and y. We can store 0.5 for x and then by entering 0.5, then the storage key above the on key, and then the x key between the alpha and stat keys, then press enter. We can store 0.6 for y by pressing 0.6, then the storage key, then y by pressing alpha, then the one key with the green y above it down below, then press enter. Now we enter the original expression, 6x plus 21y minus 26x plus 64y, and press enter. We get a value of 41. Now we enter the expression we want to test to check our work, and we see that the value, and that would be negative 20x plus 85y, and that value is also 41, so that proves we've got the correct answer. Check. This one, number 5, is also pretty easy. 4 was just combining like terms. This one is first using the distributive property, then combining like terms. Since this one is more complicated, I'll go straight to the graphing calculator method. I'll store 0.5 for x again and 0.6 for y. If we store it for number 4 already, we don't need to do it again. First we enter the original expression and press enter. We get negative 0.58 as an answer. Now we go down the list of answer choices to see which one also gives us negative 0.58 entering uh, choice A, which is 16.6x plus 2y, we get 9.5 showing that A is not the correct answer. So we eliminate choice A and cross through it. Now we enter choice B and press enter, that's going to be 16.6x minus 14.8y and we get negative 0.58 and since it's the same as for our original expression we know B is the correct answer. Check. Now for this next one, 6, not many students missed it, but it was a really easy one and what was really disturbing is what the students picked as correct answers. I actually had students pick choice B or choice D, a few of you. Do you see anything in this verbal expression that has anything like subtract, less than, minus, or difference of, shorter than, lighter than, or anything that can possibly be interpreted as a negative sign? No, those of you who picked either B or D have officially activated the idiot alert. No one watching this is an idiot, so don't do idiotic things like pick an answer that cannot possibly make sense. So we cross out B and D. 8 more than will be plus 8. Also, the product of a number and 100 could be 100x, so A is the correct answer. If you pick C, you didn't activate the idiot alert, but you mixed up what you were adding and multiplying. Here's the next problem. We're looking at problem 10. This was a very easy problem and way too many people missed it. In fact, any more than zero people missing it would be way too many. A lot of people picked answer A and that got me mad. Look at how mad I am. Look especially at those tendons in the neck. If I were prone to high blood pressure, I would already have had a stroke over this one. Can the absolute value of anything ever be a negative number? No. So anything that is negative should be the first one crossed out. If the negative was outside the absolute value brackets, it would have to be negative. But this is inside the brackets, so can't be negative. What the test writer did was lure you with the right digits, which are 135, but with the negative sign. This fish trying to bite the hook represents the test writer tricking you, and those who answered A swallowed the bait and were caught. Now let's go to the calculator. First, 
We store 45 for the letter M by pressing 45, then the storage key above the on key, then alpha, and then the division sign, which gets you the green M above it, then press enter. Then we put the absolute value operator in place by first pressing second, and if you're following with your calculator, the little upward arrow is blinking on your calculator. Next, press the zero key, which references the catalog menu. Notice the little triangle next to the A, B, S, or absolute value operation. Then press enter. Now you have the absolute value operator. Now enter negative three M, then close the parentheses. Then press enter. We have 135, which is our answer. So we circle our correct answer, which is C. Now for this next one, a lot of you got this right, but it was actually uh, really easy if you listened in class and remember anything we covered that day. Do you remember less is nest? For absolute value is less than something? Well, this is the only one of the number line graphs that meets the less is nest qualification, so this is it, choice D, the only possible right answer. It will break down to negative 6 is less than P minus 1, which is less than 6. So negative 5 and positive 7 are the boundary points, and P is the fill-in between the two boundary points. Now for the next one, 11. Most people got this one right, but I thought that reviewing the calculator strategy where you can pick the answers off the x-axis, which acts like a number line, would be useful today. First, we enter the function editor view by pressing the y equals key. We enter the left side of the equation here. We start by entering 60. We put in the absolute value operator by pressing second, then zero, then enter. We enter what's inside the absolute value bracket, then close the parentheses. We'll have to use x here as a variable because nothing besides x will work here. So we had to change that s to x. Now that we've entered the left side of the equation, we need to account for the 64 on the right side of that equation. How do we do that? We have to subtract it to make the right side of the equation zero and bring it down the number line on the x-axis. So we enter minus 64. We graph the relation by pressing graph or zoom six. It looks like the graph crosses at around negative three and negative two. And the only numbers meeting those qualifications are near them are found in answer B, which we circle as our correct answer. Now this is problem number two, one of the hardest problems on the test, and since very few got it right, I thought it might be a good idea to work on this one. A lot of people picked A for this problem, and the key to this here is the diameter of the cylinder. I think that the biggest trouble with this one is realizing that x plus 3 is not the radius, but it's the diameter. Since diameter is x plus 3, the radius will be quantity, which means in parentheses x plus 3 divided by 2. The R in the formula is replaced by quantity x plus 3 over 2, which makes B the correct answer. I believe that problem 3 was the most difficult on this test. We have the formula C equals PL times R times L or pi RL. We have R, which is 5. We are given pi, which is 3.14. The only thing left to determine before calculating is what L, the slant height, is. It's helpful to identify the slant in the drawing, and this is it, the diagonal between the R, which is 5, and the height, which is also 5. Here's the formula to find L. It's just the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We substitute in 5 for the R and the 5 for the H. Converting, we have, we have L squared equals 5 squared plus 5 squared. 5 squared plus 5 squared equals 25, plus 25 equals 50, and since I squared is L squared, excuse me, is 50. L is the square root of 50. We go to our calculator and enter the components of the formula, and those would be 3.14 for pi, 5 for r, and the square root of 50 for L. And our answer is 111.02, which is rounded to the nearest hundredth. So B is our correct answer. Now for an error analysis, what if we use the height 5 for the slant height instead? We'd get 78.5, which just happens to be the wrong answer that many of you picked. So you were caught. Try to not make that mistake again.
We try to go over some problems here that will be helpful to you. We hope to be doing it later in the year. Bring your brain to class with you. There is much for you to do, but the first thing you must do is remember to get a clue.